You are listening to Artist on Art, and I have the wonderful pleasure of speaking with two amazing choreographers that we have here in Santa Cruz. It's amazing the amount of talent we have here for such a little town. <laughs> but Ted Warburton is here in the house, UC professor in the theater arts, and Sid Perlman is back from Estonia. Sid, thank you for coming in, and Ted, welcome to the show. Great to be back. Thank you. Okay, so let's just start with you because you're the freshest off the boat here. You just got back from Estonia. It's true. I've been back. Uh, I actually came back to teach a quarter here at UCSC. So I'm teaching the students a uh, dance technique class, which has just been fabulous. And some of those students are actually going to be in the performances that we're going to see this weekend, blueprints on the main stage. And uh, my partner, David King, had a Fulbright to teach a semester in Estonia. So I was there with him for the first two months. And I'll go back at the end of the quarter for another month. Oh, so your partner's still there. He's still there. Uh, we Skype morning and evening, and uh, Skype actually is an Estonian company. So, uh, <laughs> well, that's But handy. of course, they're humble people, so it doesn't say Skype from Estonia. I think that would have done well for them. It would, because where the heck is Estonia? Estonia is, it's a good question. Um, it is south of Finland on the other side of the Baltic Sea. Sure. To the east um, is Russia, and then um, other way is sort of Sweden, sort of Denmark. Now, you've done work before, You've gone to Estonia. Yes, I was there for 2009-10 as a Fulbright Scholar, went back the following summer, and then back the following spring, and where I made what is the partner piece for the piece that I've set on the UC students this weekend. Oh, great. And so uh, we should talk about the program in just a second, but I just wanted to follow up. You brought Estonian dancers to Santa Cruz. It's and true. I had the pleasure of seeing, and it was an amazing performance. And this was a collaborative piece that you made with them. Yeah, absolutely. It was a piece that I had begun during my Fulbright year and then went back and rehearsed with them called This Is What We Do in Winter. And it was basically about what we did in winter, getting to know each other in the long, dark evenings. But I also had the opportunity to produce works by my Estonian collaborators. And so Alexis Steven Rein Saukas presented a piece, How Quickly These Accidents, and Tina Mulder and Helen Reitznik presented Facing Forest, um, both of which were I was really happy to introduce to audiences in Santa Cruz and Los Angeles and San Francisco. Yeah, it was very modern. Um, and Sid, you have a connection with the previous guest, Robert Burkhart. He helped you on one of your latest... I mean, you're so you're working so much, Sid. It's amazing. I think <laughs> last year was probably my, one of my most um, prolific years as a choreographer. It was a little bit crazy. And also as an educator, aside from teaching at UC, I did workshops at Idaho, Idaho State University and um, also um, workshops in Estonia. I had a premiere in January called Your Body is Not a Shark, which was a collaboration with composer cellist Joan Jean Renault and um, poet Denise Leto and Maya Barsak and her cadenza orchestra. And your guest um, was one of the players with the orchestra. He's really uh, extraordinarily talented and we were lucky to have him in the production. And Joan Janeron is of the Joan was with Kronos Previously. Quartet yes. um, for 20 years, and she retired in 98 to pursue a career as a, both a solo performer and composer and collaborator um, with, other, with other instrumentalists and choreographers. She's worked with a lot of people, including Joe Good, Eko and Coma, and I think Anna Halprin as well. Um, oh, yeah. And we got to see a little bit out of it at TEDx Santa Cruz, where there was an excerpt of the piece um, that was performed for the audience then, and it was tremendous. And I just, I just, I feel like you bring, you bring, you both of you bring like this uh, world class dance to Santa Cruz. It's, uh, it's really amazing. Um, and so the both of you are uh, Ted Warburton and Sid Perlman, both of you along with Majuni Kone and David Harara. Uh, there's four choreographers in particular uh, for this piece that's coming up. So you think when you dance. Uh, and I've been kind of saying it because we had the PSA up here, and so I've been repeating it over the past weeks. So you think when you dance? How, how am I supposed to? Uh, <laughs> it's a question, but it's not because I know you think when you dance. But tell us, Ted. Maybe you could tell us how the the name of the sure. program came up. So well, so so you think when you dance was the title of the outstanding uh, research lecture that I gave um, just last Thursday. So that's the arts division gets out a, a research award every year. And um, the, that's, that's a little separate from 
The concert itself. Oh, the I'm concert. sorry. Is What's the okay? concert name? I'm the concert's sorry. name is Blueprints. Blueprints. Yeah. Ah. And Blueprints is the four choreographers, and that's Manju Kone who's doing this beautiful. It's called the Yankari Marco, which is a beautiful traditional uh, West African dance with our students. And David Harar is an alum who ha currently has his company in San Francisco, and he's bringing down a piece that he just premiered at Dance Mission Theater that was supported by the Zellerbach Foundation called The Stranger. And uh, he's doing part one. Part one, that's right. We're getting part one dot point two or something. I'm not and sure. so The Stranger is inspired by his experience growing up poor in Hollywood? Yeah. That must have been hard. Yeah. <laughs> Hollywood on the seedy side. Yeah. I don't think you could get seedier <laughs> than Hollywood on the seedy side. Uh, it's a stay on the main drag, folks, if you're ever in Hollywood. Um, and so David Harari, he, he works also in Hollywood? No, he's in San Francisco now. He, but, he's totally he's, in San Francisco. Yeah, he's an alum of, I think, 2000, 2001. So it's often always so nice to bring back some choreographers that are working today that are alums of the program. Okay, and then Sid, your piece is called Ice Road. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, um, when Ted invited me to do this, um, I had been excited about working with the students, but I hadn't decided what to do. And actually, the, the idea for the piece was provoked by Ted asking me to um, write something about what it was going to be about. And I was in Estonia. This was just a few months ago. I see. And uh, one of the next things I was going to do was to take the ice road to Hiuma, um, which is an island um, where um, some of my former students have the Huma Dance Festival. And I was going with the U.S. Embassy to present a piece that I had made for them last March called Kasfuhone, which means greenhouse. And in that piece... Um, um, they have uh, squares of green astroturf, and it uh, it's a hot piece that I made for people in a in a cool country. And so I thought that I would make a flip side piece for the students here, where we would make a cool piece in what is a warmer environment. And so we have uh, four by four white squares representing ice flows, um, which in the end um, are turned into an ice road. And the ice road is when the ice gets thick enough, you can actually drive. Um, across the Baltic to the island. And it's uh, a little bit scary. When David, my partner, was on tour with Kolitans, which is the dance festival there, the school dance festival, he was on the jury. Um, he was driving the road, and they took, they unloaded everything into a separate car, but let him be in the van. And they said, but we're going to keep the door of the van open just in case. In case I think of this, what? In case of what? In case the ice cracks. But I think it was really just a little bit of scaring the gringo, um, you know, so that he would just feel a little bit nervous as he drove across the ice road. Well, how could you not? I mean, it's ice, first of all, and then Absolutely. <laughs> it cracks. It's like and, and you're in, in a sea. And in fact, the piece isn't so specific. Um, this was sort of the inspiration, the, the extreme cold and the stark beauty. And then Estonia has a really interesting avant-garde scene uh, and especially um, prolific pop music, a uh, popular kind of um, indie avant-garde alternative, whatever you want to call it. So I thought it would be really fun to introduce four different, um, four different bands, including Avert and the Two Dragons, who are really popular and sing in English um, to American audiences here in Santa Cruz. And it's just been a delight working with the students. They've been very engaged. Um, the process is collaborative, so they've contributed a lot of work to the piece. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how it all comes together this weekend. And so you you do almost all your work seems collaborative. Is that correct? It, it is. I, I'm large percent. Large, largely, yes. I mean, I, I like working with people, um, and I like their input, and um, I am inspired um, by people who are at different uh, phases in their careers and bring different kinds of virtuosity to the stage. And I think that uh, I'm not so interested in dancers being characters of furniture, but being themselves. And so I think in having them contribute their material to the piece, um, we get to see some of them, and they have ownership and agency in the work. Um, it doesn't mean that I don't sometimes you know, go out and make phrase work and bring it in and teach it to them. And I also don't usually go send them off and say, okay, go make 15 minutes of dance and come back. But it's a lot of it's a guided process. So if Ted and I were working, I'd be like, Ted, put your hand on so-and-so's shoulder. What happens if you put your arm underneath? You know, now what happens when you do this? So a lot of it is um, both physically and verbally guided mm -hmm. collaboration. And Ted Warburton, you also seem to do a lot of work collaborative. I do. I agree with Sid. I really wor like working with people, and I like treating them like the artists that they are, that they bring something to the table. And they ha these kids have a lot to bring to the table. There's a lot happening for this generation, and so they have a lot to say. Yeah. 
I bet they do. And this is here at UCSC in the theater department, the That's dance right. of the theater department. Yeah, dance. the main stage theater, May 24th through June 2nd. That's right. We got to start telling some, <laughs> we got to really pitch this. This is again at the main stage. It's called Blueprints, folks. And it's a full length program of both contemporary and traditional dance. And it is beginning May 24th. That's uh, this Friday. And it's at 7 o'clock, Friday and Saturday, and then Sunday's at 3 o'clock, and then it uh, repeats the next weekend. Um, so it'll be June 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Is that correct? Uh, 31st, 1st, and 2nd. June, sorry about so, that, folks. <laughs> May 31st, June 1st, and 2nd. And all of the information can be found at uh, the uh, Theater Arts UCSC Theater Arts uh, website. You can go to artistonart.com. You can also call uh, the UCSC ticket office at 459-2159, and tickets are available at santacruztickets.com. We're not allowed to tell you how much they cost, but there is a, a good um, uh, little discount for the youth and students and seniors. Um, and so, Ted, tell us about your piece. Sure. Well, let me tell you, Blueprints came up, the idea of Blueprints came up talking to the choreographers and thinking about sort of what's fundamental, what's fundamental in life, what's fundamental to us as artists. And we kind of, you know, we agreed that what's fundamental in a sense is connection. So there's connection to each other, there's connection to uh, dance itself, the body, there's connection to culture, there's connection to the nat natural world, the earth and physical law. And so each of the piece kind of, each of the pieces in the show reflects that sense of connection and what's fundamental to, to that choreographer. So for me, uh, my piece is called Three Bodies. Um, it, wa it was an sort of initiated event uh, originally by a conversation I had with Greg Laughlin, who's the chair of the astrophysics department. And we were sitting in a committee together, and we were uh, maybe a little bored, and he leaned over to me and he said, Ted, I, I, I have an idea for a dance. And I'm thinking, <laughs> an astrophysicist telling me he has an idea for a dance. Sounds like dancing the genome, you know, that kind of thing, which I'm not a big fan of. So oh, I, said, I was uh, thinking celestial dance. <laughs> well, that's right. Celestial dance goes way back, back to the Greeks, right? So I, th I was probably not as responsive as I could have been. And, and then You're maybe... Like, uh, yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, sure, sounds great, The right? dance of the atoms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he... I. I I kind of I literally blew him off for a couple of weeks. And he came back and he said, Ted, I really, I want to talk to you about this. Three bodies, the three body problem in astrophysics is one of the most difficult problems to solve. Ah. And in fact, it's really hard for students to grasp it in a kind of abstract way. And, and when you put the three bodies together, so three bodies of mass, three, four, and five, they're like planetary systems. So a planet and a moon and a sun, and they revolve around each other. And the gravitational pulls that pull them in together and force them apart have these feelings of, of belonging and longing and then exclusion and, and loss. So I'm thinking, this is an astrophysicist talking to me about this? Well, it's so poetic. It's so poetic. And he has been amazing. He's been in the studio with us working these problems out. So what we are trying to do is create uh, a full... Uh, uh, visualized um, both through the body and with music live me we'll have three live musicians and with digital media done by Drew Detweiler and the music's under the, the, art the direction of Carlton Hester who's a, a professor of music and really in a collaborative way begin to create a kind of visualization the aesthetic properties of the astrophysics solution but also using the rigor of the art so it's a flipping that art science on its head a little bit oh, I love that stuff <laughs> it's fun. It's it really is fun. really fun. So you are like collaborating with not only dancers, but you're collaborating with the musicians. You're collaborating with an astrophysicist. In this specific time, you're collaborating with the digi digital media artists. And what I think is really important, and please tell me if this is true for you, when you're doing collaboration, that all of the parties are there at the creation, that it's hap it happens together. And so if you don't bring in the digital artist, maybe you bring them in after the fact, it almost feels like it's, it's an addition to it, as opposed to something that grew out of this. Uh, what, what do you say? Yeah, I would agree with you completely. And we started this project, actually, the, the uh, Drew and Greg and Carlton and myself started this in uh, summer of 2012, and with some great funding from the arts division and the, and the, and the campus. And then 
premiered it at um, the uh, Zero One uh, Arts Festival. In, in San Jose. In, that's right, in September. But what we did was come together into the studio, and it's the first time that Greg, the, the astrophysicist, had been at a studio, a dance studio, mm -hmm. and he kind of didn't really know what to do. But now he's so comfortable, and he's talking to the dancers, and the dancers, I think, prefer talking to him than to me because <laughs> he has very poetic ways of talking about it. And so even the vocabulary, when you're collaborating, evolves into not someone else's vocabulary or he has to speak dance dance ease but into a kind of common vocabulary that's really exciting so you had the dance astrophysics uh, yeah. conversation yeah that's so that sounds so wonderful and and brilliant because the best way to teach some of these really abstract ideas is through dance is through music and opening up parts of your brain that that maybe aren't as easily opened up when you're just in a scientific mode or um so pushing those boundaries yeah, uh, both yeah. art, like you said artistically and 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 with science so the two contemporary pieces uh, will be yours, Ted, Three Bodies, and I'm assuming Ice Road. Mm -hmm. um, and so then you have um, traditional. Right. So um, Manju Kone is doing the, the traditional West African dance, um, Yankati. And I think it's I think it's 30 plus dancers on stage. She's got live drummers. So Salif Kone, her brother, is playing, who's a very well-known musician in the area, and just a brilliant, brilliant uh, African uh, musician. And they are, um, it's a kind of call and response. I mean, when I look at them and I listen to them and I watch them, you can't help but move in your seat. I mean, you're just jiving with them. So it's a, it's, I think it's going to be one of our favorite pieces. It's just going to, people are just going to walk out of there just dancing and dancing through the streets. And so it's about young men, men and women that meet and they're impressing each other with their flirtatious dance moves. Um, and there's a, quite a lineup of live musicians that are going to be performing it. It sounds fabulous. 30 dancers. Yeah, I think it's got to be at least 30 dancers. So to block that must have been... Oh. And it's all amazing. students, yeah. And all students, yeah. We have oh. she has one guest artist who's who is uh, who's helped her stage it. But we've opened the stage up. Normally, the stage has what's called flipper walls that kind of frame the stage, and we just couldn't do that. We just opened the space up. She said, "I need as much space as possible." <laughs> so you got it, mind you. Oh, and then uh, the stranger is that a uh, traditional? It's it's a I would call it contemporary modern. Yeah, contemporary um, modern. Is it, there some traditional Mexican or he's so. is he exploring his? Uh, uh, yeah, his Mexican American. Yeah, heritage I think you'll see. He's he's definitely in the themes, exploring his 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 roots. Um, and he's got some, you know, it's there's some interesting tensions that go on in this piece. And what's nice about this is that he's bringing his company down. So we're going to see what our professional dancers right now in San Francisco here on stage. And so it's a great chance for our students to see how professional dancers work and how they rehearse and how they tech and. Um, it's been a great cross-fertilization. Wonderful. You've been listening to Ted Warburton talk about the upcoming dance uh, event called Blueprints. It starts this Friday, May 24th. Uh, it'll be 24th and 25th. That's Friday and Saturday at 7 o'clock p.m. And then on the 26th on Sunday at 3 p.m. And then following June uh May 31st, Friday, and June 1st, Saturday at 7 o'clock p.m. again, and then Sunday, June 2nd will be the last showing. And this is all at the main stage theater here at UC Santa Cruz. Um, so you have four of these amazing choreographers coming together. Uh, most of them are, are performed by students. Um, tell me now, you, you came up with the idea for uh, Three Bodies uh, through this astrophysicist's uh, inspiration. You're right, Greg Laughlin. How, how then did you bring the program together? Again, it must have been a collaboration. Right. Well, it was, it, it was, programming is difficult, as Sid knows. Trying to find the right order for any um, curated show like this, where you're bringing in different choreographers, is a real uh, art form. And so, yeah. um, in part, it's driven a little bit by pragmatics, who has musicians and where, where do they come, who's doing a lot of visuals and how do we put those pieces together, and in part in terms of just timing, what can open and what can close. So, I knew pretty much right away that my closing piece should be Sid. 
Because <laughs> Sid always creates this incredible work. Nobody visually. wants to follow Sid. Yeah, That's exactly. just not true. But anyway. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, and I figured, well, you know, if I should open because everybody will be okay following me. So I'll open the piece. But I also wanted to get um, the longer pieces, the two longer pieces with the African and then the, the stranger kind of, uh, you know, right there nestled in the middle so that we could have an intermission. People could walk away with the African and then come in and really get into a story which would lead us right into Sid's so exuberant dancing. And storytelling. And storytelling, that's right. And so, mm-hmm. Ted, how long is the piece? I would I say... I mean, the program, excuse me. Uh, we don't have a final time, but I'm thinking we're going to be in the 90 to 100 minute range. Great, and yeah. that includes the intermission? Yeah. So this is going to be a beautiful date night, folks. Come on out. Um, I, I you, you will not be disappointed. I have no doubt um, the, the work that will be shown will be work that you'll find in any um, international city of this caliber. It's just amazing to me, again, that we have this here in Santa Cruz. It, it really makes me feel so special. Um, and you'll have live music, uh, West African drummers, um, some improvisational music mm-hmm. combinations, and m- most of them featuring students other than the piece by Herrera, The Stranger, uh, which is when he brings his uh, his troop here from San Francisco. That's right. Um, let's see. What do you think, Sid? Um, I just, I guess, I'd just like to talk a little bit about um, really how great it's been with working with this group of students. I have 12 dancers, and they come from a variety of backgrounds and experiences, and they've just been... Um, incredibly professional in their demeanor you know they've really they've worked hard they've come to rehearsal prepared they've um, contributed they're taking responsibility for bringing the piece up to as high of a quality as we can you know it's been a basically I think a five week five mm-hmm. or six week rehearsal it's period we've been fast. rehearsing you know six hours a week six and a half hours a week which is great um, in some ways that's a luxury in some ways it's not very much at all and um, I've really enjoyed getting to know them. Um, I think almost half of them are taking my class, and so I get to see, they, they're getting to spend a lot of this quarter with me, you know, if they're taking class in the morning and three rehearsals, so I get to know them quite well. And I uh, I have really um, great hopes for them in the future, not only in dance, but in, you know, the variety of fields that they're going into. So it's been really um, an honor to get to work with them. Oh, it's wonderful. So, oh, I was going to say, you know, one of the, one of the things that we... we we're fortunate enough to get just a few years ago is that is the minor in dance and so now we have we hadn't had we had a theater arts major but we hadn't really had a degree program for dancers and so now we got the minor in dance which is just the beginning and we have p- students from all over the campus we have students in mathematics and um, marine biology and literature, literature and latin american and latin literature american and yeah. latin american studies community studies um so there's this huge range of, of students who come together who don't necessarily see each other in their normal major walk of life but they come together and they have this one passion for dance and they are remarkable, they and, are remarkable. and i think it's always interesting because i think um Putting dancers in a room together is how they get to know... You really get to know people in a different way. My experience in Estonia was I know, as compared to people in other disciplines, I really got to know the people I was working with well because we're bodies together in a room. And I might take two people who have never met each other before and ask one of them to basically give all of their weight to the other one or lie on top of them or carry them. And these are people who don't know each other or or smell them or, you know, whatever it is. And um, we get to know each other really well with dance. And what I've found over the years of having dance companies is that the friendships that people make in dance almost always outlast the projects themselves and um, that people who danced in my company years ago are still very good friends and I think that that happens in processes like like these kinds of concerts people from different departments are meeting each other and you know will know each other for a long time and you're bringing um, you're creating an intimate safe space and that then allows for this type of depth Absolutely. of connection. Sid Perlman, thank you so much. Ted Warburton, thank you so much for coming up. Uh, don't miss it, folks. Blueprints uh, this weekend, May 24th through June 2nd. Please stay tuned for Indie Babies. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, thank you to my guest. Thank you, Vanya Benavides, for live tweeting. You're a goddess. And uh, everybody sit back and relax. Enjoy. Have a great day.
Jogo de cabra cega 